Hello, Marvel Legends fans. Welcome to the latest and greatest Fan First Friday here exclusively on the Hasbro Pulse. We are the Marvel Legends team. We're so happy that you could be with us today. Again, I am Ryan on the marketing team. I'm joined, as always, by Dwight in design and a very festive Dan also in marketing. We've got some fun things planned for you guys. Uh, stick around to the end. As you know, you never know what kind of um, little presents we will leave for you throughout. So let's just jump right in, right? There's been a lot of speculation on what we're going to reveal here. First up, brand new reveal is an item that no one's going to see coming. It's an item that has been atop the very list of uh, fan wish lists. And let's just jump right in and take a look at him here. So of course, we're talking about more Fox Movie X-Men, the figure you all wanted. Forget about Colossus, forget about Juggernaut, original X-Men one suit, no way. What we're gonna do is go back to Deadpool. So this is the burned version of Deadpool, his charred suit from that final battle in Deadpool 2. Here's a closer look. Dwight, why don't you tell them a little bit about this inspired deco choice for the figure? What's with all your Juggernaut and Colossus hate, man? I want those too. Maybe that's not what we're talking about today, but somewhere down the line, I, I want to get those to my collection. I don't see why you need to be so close-minded to that. Anyways, um, talking about this guy, though, yeah, we have uh, Deadpool from the very end of the film when he got all uh, burnt and blown up, um, and it's kind of the, uh, we're just calling it the dusty version, so his color is a very muted uh, reddish tone, and uh, that kind of translates across the entirety of the figure. Uh, it's all been kind of dialed back a little bit. Um, still has all the blasters and um, swords that came with the two-pack uh, with Negasonic, but this is kind of just a single offering with kind of uh, that, you know, tease at the X-Force kind of coloring that they gave us at the end of the film. And so this figure will be available exclusively on Amazon, and it will be up for pre-order later today, December 4th at 1 p.m. So this is that chance to get a uh, single packed out Deadpool figure with all the accessories in a slightly uh, darker color version there. So add him to your growing Fox X-Men movie collection. All right, next up is an item that we teased back at PulseCon in September, and it was the fallen version of Silver Surfer with the Mjolnir, part of that King Thanos storyline. So we'll take a look at uh, Silver Surfer again here. And as we spoke to last time, this item will be a Walgreens exclusive in the US and uh, at EB Games up north for our friends in Canada. So we have another shot of Silver Surfer, both with the Mjolnir, he also comes with two uh, cool energy effects. And then here is a look at the final in-package version of Silver Surfer coming to you early spring 2021. And I actually, if you can see it, I have the new King Thanos head on the old Thanos body behind me here battling uh, Silver Surfer on a Hasbro Pulse uh, Legends flight stand. So it's something you guys all need to, to add for your shelves in there. Um, and Dwight, could you just talk a little bit about um, perhaps the theme for the 2021 Walgreens program? You know, every year we do a specific kind of um, collection for Walgreens, whether it was Fantastic Four or um, X-Men uh, female characters. What's the theme for 2021? Yeah, we went uh, kind of big and broad this year trying to come up with something different. Uh, we wanted to go cosmic and we thought there was lots of uh, Cosmic characters that we haven't done or needed updates. And on top of that, it was a piece of the universe that wasn't being addressed uh, in the uh, theatrical releases for the year. We always try to find something that gives us a window to give you guys a little bit more variety. And if all of the uh, movies are, you know, leaning uh, Avengers, uh, this gave us a good opportunity to do something different with uh, something like the uh, cosmic uh, world. So, um, that's one, and we have a few more coming uh, over the next uh, couple months. So we're going to sneak peek the next uh, cosmic-themed character. This is a, a very important character. He's got a nice update here. Let's take a look at him now. This is going to be a classic Nova with that, I believe it's that same Silver Centurion-style uh, shoulder pads um, and some extra pieces which aren't shown here yet, but here's your look at the core figure. 
Um, what do you like most about this figure, Dwight? Um, I, I, it was great to get to revisit uh, Rich Rider because the last one we did was, last time we did this character, I'm guessing it was 2007, 2008 uh, in that window. So it's been a long time and uh, very, very outdated by today's standards. So um, getting to revisit him uh, was awesome because he definitely needed an update for your shelf. So he's got a new torso um, connection to the arms with the shoulder pad. So they rotate out of the way really, really nicely. And an all new uh, helmet um, with uh, multiple pieces. The I think the last time we did it, it was all kind of handled in deco. Um, now the star is a separate piece, the helmet is a separate piece, and the face is a separate piece. So there's lots of clean transitions between the painted areas on the figure. Uh, and it just, it looks fantastic and it keeps nice, beautiful, uh, sharp edges on that star. I think the last one kind of looked like a starfish that's been washed up on the beach for uh, a week or two too long. So uh, this, you know, really, really uh, harkens to that look from the comics. Um, it's a beautiful, small little detail. And uh, he's also going to come with some uh, extra bits and pieces and some unique uh, surprises uh, that we'll reveal, I believe, at a later date. I know Ryan likes to tease those things out for you guys. Yeah, we like to we like to leave the trail of breadcrumbs and do do things a little piecemeal. But uh, so so Nova will be available at Walgreens in the U.S. And also, EB Games in Canada. He is going to follow um, the first. Uh, figure there, uh, Silver Surfer. So Nova will be coming in kind of later spring timeframe 2021. Uh, no pre-orders today for uh, Walgreens in the US. There might be some international uh, pre-orders uh, in Canada though, uh, starting shortly for the Silver Surfer specifically. So with that housekeeping out of the way, let's move on to uh, the next big wave here. This is of course going to be our X-Men wave for 2021. Uh, this is Dan's, one of Dan's favorite, I know, and, and all of us. So this is of course the House of X themed wave here. You already know you'll be able to recreate this iconic shot of the five main heroes in the wave, plus Moira and uh, Omega Senno, which were revealed, but we are very happy to show you the Build-A-Figure for the very first time here. Um, on the stream. Uh, so Dwight, take him through the Tri-Sentinel. Yeah, this was a really creepy looking um, Sentinel. And this, I think this wraps up our year of the Sentinel. Um, more Sentinels created this year than probably ever in uh, Marvel Legends with what we had Nimrod, we have Omega Sentinel, we have the big uh, uh, House of X uh, HasLab Sentinel, and now we have the Tri-Sentinel. Oh, we also had Bastion and the uh omega prime so there's yeah there was a lot um but tri sentinel is awesome he stands about eight inches tall um he's got three independent necks and heads um he's really spindly and creepy uh it's just a cool weird design and it's really odd with that kind of purpley pink pink hues to him um but it really works well with the contrasting uh silver and, and dark gray metallic uh I think he looks off, fun, creepy character, and he'll look awesome next to the rest of the this wave to give you something that I don't think many of you saw coming because, uh, you know, looking at those boards, there was lots of discussion as to what the Build-A-Figure might be, so, um, and a few of you got it, but uh, I, I think uh, for a lot, they you guys were looking in different directions, so it's fun to do something fun and different for you guys, so hope you enjoy it uh, as much as we enjoyed making it. I love the speculation of uh, Apocalypse in a suit using the Joe Fixit body or the Kingpin body. So that, I guess, could have been cool. But, you know, how about an all new sculpt instead for the Tri-Sentinel? Hopefully you guys dig that. So let's let's go through the rest of the wave again just to show the final uh, Gucci shots, as Dan uh, calls them. And uh, I'll take a look at the final impact offering. So first up, we have Moira here with two looks. She'll first come in her uh, lab coat with uh, a set of glasses there. Note the clear glasses this time, uh, <laughs> unlike Peter Parker. She'll also come with those alternate arms um, and an alternate head as well for a more, you know, she's, that's, her, that's her work look and then uh, her kind of casual look secondarily. So we can, anything you wanna say about uh, Moira Dwight, this first time Legends character? 
Well, it's awesome to get to add her to the line. And we know you guys like civilian characters. So that's why we kind of went with the multiple looks for this one, because we knew it would give you a fantastic base body for you guys to have some fun with it on your own. You know, there's more uh, awesome civilians coming for you guys to mix and match and do whatever you guys can imagine. All right. And the next next up, let's take a look at uh, Charles Xavier here. We revealed the standard look uh, with his helmeted head back at PulseCon. So we have a shot of him with that helmet on, which you know, pointing very, very authoritatively. But also a new piece to reveal today is an alternate head, Dwight. What we I don't think we've ever done a telepathic like ring effect like this. It's pretty cool. Not rings. We had a telepathic uh, blob um, that came with the hover chair uh, a while ago. But this is a little bit uh, cleaner, more sleek, um, you know, a different take on it uh, for the telepathic look. He's got his eyes closed uh, and he's thinking, thunk, think hard on whatever it is that Charles likes to think about. Is this the first figure we've done with the eyes closed? I think it is the first one we've done with the eyes closed. Um, typically, nap time action figures aren't... Uh, you know, uh, big draws, but you know, nap time, Charles, man, put them at the top of your list, something fun and different and new. I also, um, wanted to call out to our, our packaging team, uh, Ben and team did an amazing job. We were looking at these impact shots. Now you can see he actually reached out and worked with, um, Marvel publishing to get the Krakoan language font. So you'll notice on the, yeah. on the front, it, it doesn't say Charles or, you know, Moira McTaggart, or it, it says the name in the, in the special language. So if you guys have the, uh, the hardcover books or the comics and you want to go check our spelling on that, feel free, but we think it looks awesome and it's uh, just something new and it's very, it's very on brand. So after <laughs> Professor X, we'll, we'll have his uh, friend of me here, Magneto, um, as we saw him back at PulseCon in this white look, to him and he comes with you know all different kinds of sets of hands for your varying magneto pose needs he's got fists he's got the spell hands uh and more and uh here's a look at him in pack how are we, guys how are we feeling about this uh white version do we prefer the white the black the purple and red there's been a couple of magnetos over the years recently I always have to go with the purple and red, but I got to say the Krakow and language thing is amazing because I'm just thinking about on store shelves when some child picks up this action figure and goes, dad, who's this? And the dad's like, well, clearly, son, this is, uh, 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 it's a superhero guy with the helmet. So I, you know, and the kid's going to be looking at his dad like, what's wrong with you? It's so there's going to be a lot of fun with this one. I like this. It's fun. It's different. All right. Next up after Magneto, we have Wolverine with my favorite set of claws, the fat claws. So this Wolverine actually comes with an alternate head, which is new, I believe. And uh, it's some, it's one that Dwight can relate to. It's uh, a bearded, o uh, older, but still uh, still awesome version. Right, Dwight? Look at how handsome and regal that pose yeah, is. Shots fired. Shots fired. <laughs> what are you? Are you? Are you saying that I'm? Uh, I look a little bit uh, uh, peaked and scruffy. I like to consider myself handsomely disheveled. I think Dwight, like Wolverine in the storyline, at the very end, you will be the last one standing, uh, right? Because you're the strongest. Is yeah. that was that a good save? <laughs> that, I, I, you know what? I'm going to go with that. I love it. That that just. That made my uh, December. Sure, we're only a couple of days in, but I'll take it. Yeah, hundreds of years into the future, Dwight will still be on Legends, pumping them out. Um, <laughs> okay, next up we have we have Cyclops. Uh, also comes with some extra pieces. Um, in addition to his stoic profile, there he will come with that angry optic blast that we've seen once before, I believe, on the. Um, the retro carded version, but um, updated for this figure. So you get Cyclops here. Let's take a look at him in pack. Great, super fun. Love when we can include some some blast effects and powers. And then next up we have Marvel Girl, which was a really exciting figure. Uh, the team did an old Marvel Girl and 
Cable two pack, I want to say, um, way back in the early days. But this is a, a brand new look at her. She comes with a new accessory too, which I'll let Dwight talk to. <laughs> a house plant. How wonderful. She can gift it to, you know, Scott or Logan and say, here's something for your mantle, boys. You know, it's nice. It's the Krakoan flower, which if you guys have read the story, you know, it's a very important piece uh, of this whole arc between the Krakoan portals and the flowers, which are used for different types of medical reasons. So there's a lot of um, just kind of a uh, history that they're creating today to wrap around Krakoa. And it was kind of fun just to put some it's just always cool to add accessories to the characters and little environmental uh, tchotchkes that you can use. So um, it looks, it, it works well with her. Like I said, you can add them to your shelf. Um, she looks great. She's a, a huge improvement. I know some of you guys were saying she has no torso articulation. Um, she doesn't have the traditional articulation, but she does have a um, articulation joint that we've used on multiple other figures in the past, like Kang, and our theatrical Doctor Strange's. She has kind of that inverted rocker that is hidden under her belt. So she still rotates and kind of rocks left and right at her belt. So it leaves a perfectly intact torso, but she'll still get uh, some different types of movement uh, out of the action figure. So it's not what you see all the time, but there is uh, you know, some cool uh, extra uh, movement to her that you don't get out of those images. And it allows for a nice, clean, pristine um, torso, which is something that we don't often do. So, you know, like we've said many, many times, um, we're always looking to do different things and to keep evolving what works and what doesn't uh, with the line. Sometimes we hit home runs. Sometimes we hit ground balls. Sometimes we strike out. You know, that's kind of part of the, the brand. And that's why there's multiples of us all working on this, trying to figure out what's next. Um, because when we stop trying and stop trying to think of new ways to do it, the, you know, we might as well not even be here. So um, I understand it might not be what all of you guys are looking for, but uh, I hope that you guys, you know, appreciate that the team really puts effort and thought into trying to figure out other new ways to do the figures year after year to make them uh, updated and fresh and different. And uh, I think we get way more home runs than we get strikeouts. So all in all, you know, I think we're way ahead of the uh, game, but um, you know, keep us uh, informed to what you guys like and what you don't like, you know, hit us in the, in the comments uh, on the pulse, uh, hit us on the forums and the fan uh, boards across the, the internets and uh, let us know. And we'll keep kind of absorbing that and doing what we can with it to hopefully keep pumping out some amazing action figures for you guys. What's up with the Dwight and Dan are, are very humble. <laughs> I don't know. Did I get it right? Because I'm I am not a baseball guy at all. Um, I, I just I fall I I fall asleep whenever I'm watching a baseball game. If I'm at a baseball game and I can have a drink and a nice uh, hot dog, I'm totally invested. But I can't watch. I've never really watched baseball at home, so uh, you know, I don't I don't know where that came from. I think the strikeouts these days are very far and few between. Our our OPS is, has got to be pretty good um, for all those baseball fans. All right, so let's wrap it up. The last figure, Omega Sentinel. She is a really cool figure. Um, comes with multiple arms and multiple heads, as you'll see. So the standard look here comes with some blasters. Dwight Walker, walk them through the, the two versions that you get in pack. Yeah, you get the clean uh, kind of uh, feminine robot arms and they have a single elbow because it allows us to rip them off at the elbow and replace them with those two massive cannons you guys just saw. Uh, and we also did a, 90 inspired, a 90s inspired head um, with all of that, a magnificent hair. That is, that is probably one of the uh, best, most voluminous hair sculpts we've done on a figure to date. Um, but it looks great, and it's inspired by the 90s era of this character. So a, a fun alternate to the um, to the looks of her from her bald, modern look uh, from the books of this year. So that completes the wave. Um, we are happy to, to close out the year with uh, a pre-order for this entire wave later today. 
at starting at uh, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You guys know the drill. They start around 1 p.m. Uh, so if it's not up there immediately, just be a little patient. It, uh, we think it'll get there soon. Uh, so definitely today. Um, and yeah, go out and snatch up your set of House of X and complete your Tri Sentinel. And I just wanted to give a shout out again to our packaging team uh, for that House of X wave, that Dawn of X wave. Uh, ben and team were able to get the original, you know, artists like Pepe Larraz, Marte Garcia to do the packaging artwork. So once you collect all those, it's going to look amazing if you're a big fan of uh, that comic book. All right, we do have one more uh, item to discuss that will be up for pre-order later today. Um, we put it at, as a tease in our, at the very end of our last live stream. Uh, most people immediately knew who it is uh, and got psyched for it. Um, there were some questions over which version would it be, but of course we've got a classic uh, Modoc deluxe figure by himself. He is such a unique shape and so awesome that uh, he would not fit in a window box because the dimensions, he, he's too hes too thick and deep all around. So this is a look at the packaging. It is a closed box, but with gorgeous you know, artwork um, behind him there. I believe it was uh, from the same team that brought us the um, Deluxe Thanos. So this is a look at the back of the pack. He stands close to eight and a half inches tall there while sitting upon his blast effect so let's take a closer look at the different versions. Dwight, walk them through the first, the, the two out of pack picks we have here. Sure, sure. Um, first we have uh, Modoc here uh, on the blast effect with kind of a angry face. Um, it has an alternate uh, mouth and teeth that uh, has a removable um, chunk to his head. You can basically grab his cheeks, rip off his face and replace it with uh, a more stoic uh, calm version. Uh, he's got a control rod on his bottom uh, left that moves around so you can kind of put his hand around his driving stick and he rotates but he he gets a little bit of rocking on that stand but not much. Like uh, Ryan said he's thick and uh, that makes him want to topple over so we couldn't give him too much rocking but it's a really cool figure. Uh, it, here I got him over here. So uh, for those of you who are wondering what this guy looks like and what he looks like next to somebody else, here is his buddy, Mr. Scientist Supreme, chilling out with uh, Mr. Modoc. So, you know, they're two besties, you know, battling for power in their AIM organization, but that gives you an idea for the scale of this character. Dwight, can you show him to, you know, take the face off? I can, yeah. So you got uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Egg here, and you just grab his cheeks, and it pops his face out. So it's just got a, a cavity and a big uh, key. Uh, I don't have the uh, alternate head here, but then it just kind of slaps in, pops down, push down the hair, and uh, there you go. An awesome new character in a really cool uh, closed box, something different for us. Um, but it's really beautiful to celebrate the uh, packaging team's hard work on the front and really getting get credit for these beautiful, beautiful pieces of uh, plastic art. And it looks awesome in pack and it's gonna look amazing on your shelves when you guys get to add it to your collections in the very near future. I just wanna give a shout out to Tony. He did a lot of work on this item too. And uh, I know he gave all his love to this. So shout out to our master, uh, Tony C. So shout out to him. Yeah, Tony helped out this year with both both of the deluxe figures, uh, Thanos and uh, Modoc, working with Dwight, putting Tony's expert touches on it. So um, show him some love too, you got you fans out there. So yeah, the Modoc will be available as well later today um, as a deluxe figure, um, 1 p.m. So go out and get him. And also, I have them somewhere around here. Where do I have them? Oh, here. Go grab your aim. Troop Builders on Pulse, 15 bucks. Get a bunch. You know you're going to need them. You know Modoc needs some some thugs to kind of boss around on his evil schemes. So that wraps up our pre-order section. And we have something really fun here that hopefully you guys like. And Dan is going to walk us through that. Yeah, guys. So, you know, 
This is the last Marvel live stream for 2020, and it's been kind of a crazy year. So just bear with us. We're going to have a little fun this time around. You know, towards the end of the year, that's when we see all the lists for the top 10 best action figures uh, of 2020. So we kind of wanted to have fun, too, because we usually have a weekly meeting where we just talk and nerd out on action figures and Marvel in general. So today we're going to have our favorite uh, five figures. And it's going to be a snake draft. We love, me and Ryan talk sports all the time too. So we thought we'd bring our love of sports and have a snake draft. We are going to choose our favorite five figures from 2020. Uh, they're not going to be retailer exclusive. So in our draft pick, you won't see, you know, Retro Rogue or Classic Storm or things of that nature. But uh, we've actually made some rules about each five picks. So... I'm going to start off, then Dwight, and then Ryan. And each of us needs to pick at least one Build-A-Figure, one movie slash Game Reverse character, one retro six-inch character, one comic character, and one wild card. So the wild, you can pick any type of care, uh, figure uh, that you want to go. So guys, are you ready? I, I literally spent like an hour yesterday trying to strategize and mentally play what Dwight's going to pick, what Ryan's going to pick. So. Dang, look at Ryan. Got he my, has his sheet already. I'm All ready. right, so, dang, guys, at the end of this, we're going to post our five favorite uh, figures, right? And on Hasbro Pulse, you guys, the fans, you guys get to choose who won this draft, all right? So with the first pick, I was very lucky. Uh, I got chosen with the first pick, and I have to go with this bad boy right here. The Retro Spider-Man. So much love to you, Dwight, but this Retro Spider-Man is so awesome. I love that new body because, you know, so poseable. But I love that 90s retro card. You know how much I love that 90s cartoon. So anything on that retro card, I love. So that's got to be my first pick. Next is Dwight. What's your yes. first? Well, this thing all threw me because, one, you said this was a snake draft and there's not a single snake on the list. And with me not knowing <laughs> jack squad about most sports and betting, uh, I've been to a casino once in my life. And I only went to a casino so I could watch March Madness. So I really am not into this stuff. So uh, I was really thrown off. And, and you didn't give any rules to this. You're like, let's just pick some characters. But are we picking a team to be the best looking action figures are we trying to make the most powerful team what were the rules there's a lot of you know levels to this that i just don't grasp so we need to really i love this but we need to come up with like a maybe a uh the master's uh line plan where we review every legend every made and we need to have some guide rules so we can have some fun with this and keep it going forward oh, with I, uh all I hear is excuses. Wait, I, I don't, I don't really. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you little okay. jack wagon. You can get away with that because you're hiding down south, but you know, we'll deal with you when you <laughs> get back up here sometime in the new year. All right, so my first pick is uh, Dr. Doom from the Fantastic Four Wave. Uh, he is one of my favorite figures that I got to work on this year. I've said it before. Uh, revisiting a character that you've done just once 10 years ago was really cool. Um, all the advancements that we have today that we didn't have back then and just the uh, amount of uh, learning, uh, the learning curve uh, really made a really special action figure um, with both the classic head, the modern head, um, the really dark green uh, color palette. Um, I know we've done a couple of dooms. We had the retro carded one with the alternate cape and the uh, little like uh, dicky around his neck for the first appearance kind of look but I gotta go with Doom from the Fantastic Four uh, wave because that one is uh, one of my favorite figures of the year and possibly one of my favorite figures that I've ever worked on. All right, so with the third pick, I'm going to continue the strong uh, legacy of amazing third picks. You've got your James Harden, Jason Tatum, Jalen oh. Brown, Luka Doncic, so anyways, with the, with, with the first pick, my first pick is going to be Stan Lee is my entertainment uh, oh. slash movie figure choice. I'm glad, I'm glad no one sniped me on that one. So Stan is my first pick. Clearly, we all know how important he was 
Um, we were lucky enough to to meet him and interact with him a few times over the years. He came to Hasbro once, um, was very nice, and he was uh, our guest at Hascon. Um, it was it was quite an ordeal to to uh, work to get this figure out, but I was so happy um, that we could do it. Uh, the figure looks great. The likeness is spot on. The packaging is awesome. It's got a signature. It's got some foil hits on it. So uh, Stan is my number one pick for movie and entertainment. So because this is a snake draft, that means Dwight. Uh, if you don't know that um, I get to pick again because I was last. So with uh, my first pick in the second round, I'm going to go build a figure. And I'm going to go strong guy here um, because I'm a big X-Men fan. We, got, we, we know this. Uh, this is a, a figure that uh, has been wanted for such a long time. And um, I think it came out great. It's a it's an homage to the the Toy Biz version and also the the standard comic design hashtag unpainted zipper. But um, yeah, love this figure, and uh, he is my my build a figure selection. Back to you, Dwight. Back to me. Okay, um, I'm going to jump over into the. <sighs> the card retro carded figures and i'm going to go with the armored daredevil um Ooh. we've done a few uh matt murdoch's over the year but that 90s card uh has a very very um uh strong passion uh, of our engineer our lead engineer on this line and it was really cool to do uh something so uh ridiculous because that's just uh it's beautiful with the blacks and the deep deep metallic reds of his armor um it's a really cool looking action figure it looks awesome on the uh, retro card so i'm going to go with armored daredevil for my uh retro card figure yo shout out to our engineering team uh our lead engineer he's such an influential person he doesn't get the love because he likes to be private but i gotta say he's probably one of the most important people in the marvel legends uh, team, so uh, I, I kind of knew you were going to pick that pick, Dwight, but uh, it's cool. Um, I'm kind of surprised he's still here. My pick is going to actually be a comic pick, and it's going to be this guy right here. I got Rhodey, so I got the Deluxe War Machine. I really love this head sculpt. I love all the accessories that come with him, and uh, I, I really love this figure. He He's definitely my top 10 favorite, so... I'm glad he was still on the board. He's my number two pick right there. Um, I think it's me. So is it me or am I wrong? No, it's you. <laughs> this is your draft. <laughs> I don't have a clue. Third round. Third round. <laughs> it is me. Sorry about that. Uh, the third round. So everybody knows my favorite comic book is AOA. And so from this year, my favorite wave has been the Age of Apocalypse wave. And so for my build a figure pick, I have to pick Sugar Man. Like, I love Strong Guy. I love Abomination. I love all the build figures. But for me, Strong Guy, it, there's there's nothing like Strong Guy. Come on, guys. You got you to acknowledge this. Dwight, you guys did an awesome job. Man, look at him. So Thanks. Yeah, it was, it was fun to make that, that gross thing. <laughs> So I don't have my list in front of me. Who's next? Is it Ryan or me? It's Dwight. You're up. <laughs> um, all right, then I'm going to go. See, this is tough. I want to go uh, movie uh, this slate. And this is really tough because you all know that I got a, um, a man crush on Hugh Jackman. And I would love to pick the Logan in the leather jacket. But that's actually my least favorite of the three logans we've done this year the wow. uh tank top version and the suited version for comic-con are higher on my personal list so i can't go with this logan since you guys are giving me these rules of not using exclusives so i can't pick the figures that i really want yeah more excuses i get it uh i'm gonna have to go down uh to a different character and i'm gonna zip down to the uh, Ian McKellen uh, Magneto figure. Uh, love the actor, love the ability to make a modern and a kind of past figure. 
And this is probably a weird pick because that Magneto is not a film accurate version, but it was such a treat to uh, work on a figure of that amazing man. And I was uh, super honored to do it. And his team was super awesome to work with. So um, that's where that's where my vote goes for a movie figure. I'm going to go with the, uh, it's got the, the alternate, um, what was it? The Fassbender was the alternate head, but I'm going to go with the, uh, uh, Sir Ian McKellen uh, Magneto figure is my theatrical pick. That's shocking. I was convinced, Dwight, that you were going to pick Hugh, but all right, it makes sense. I'm sorry I restricted you with the rules, you know? We're definitely, <laughs> Ryan and I are definitely just ganging up on you and making sure you don't get anything you want. <laughs> All right, so with my third pick, given that discussion, and because we know, Dan, that uh, these picks, you know, are going to be subject to the salary scale, so being picked higher, you know, is, is, is advantageous. Because Dwight wouldn't do it, I'll do it. The um, jacketed Wolverine will be my pick. Uh, this is going to be a wild card pick for me because I already have Stan, so this is going to be uh, my wild card. But, yeah, you know, just in, in further speaking about that, we've talked a little bit about – how psyched we were to do movie X-Men characters for the first time this year. Um, from the marketing side, I would love for fans to uh, understand that um, while everything is on the table for us, certain things require more work, right? So we love hearing those suggestions. Um, but uh, yeah, well, the Hugh Jackman, you know, working with him and his team, the figures came out great. It was a long time coming, a lot of behind the scenes work, um, both on the design and business end. But again, super happy with how it came out. We love them and they'll forever be in your collection. He is my third round pick. To kick off the fourth round, coming back around, I am going to go comic, my comic selection. It will be none other than cosmic no. ghost rider now admitted no. admittedly i didn't know too much about this character i had to i had to read up on on the background on the books but it's just you know clearly an all new sculpt an amazing figure by itself and i also get the boost of having the craziest vehicle we've ever done um i know when dwight pitched that and we were looking at the sculpt for it it was like how are we going to fit this cosmic bike <laughs> with this huge orb in the middle and then have a flight stand with it and have the blasters and the whip um but you know jason and team got it all in the box it's a great figure it's going to go well with the king thanos and some of the other figures we have and um you know my heart goes to the art share professor x but i, I gotta say that cosmic ghost rider is my second favorite vehicle um, that we've ever done so that'll be my fourth round pick dwight back to you for round four okay round four i'm gonna go build a figure and this one's also kind of a surprise to me. Uh, and I know it's weird that I'm surprising myself, but I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. So that's acceptable. I'm going with, uh, I had it down to two. I'm not going to tell you what the second one was because I don't want to feel your shade. Uh, so I'm just going to go with uh, Deadpool or sorry, Venom Pool as my build a figure from the uh, Venom Wave. It's not a character I know. I knew anything about period um but you can't argue with something that just looks that make that looks that freaking cool and make such an amazing action figure um from his giant meat cleaver slabs of swords that cross his back in an x uh to his absolutely disgusting costume with all of his uh, staples and torn stitching uh it's just it's an amazing action figure uh the scale of it is really impressive and uh, I think it just, I don't know. I think it's just, it was just, a, a, it's fun to give you guys curveballs that no one really thought about or saw coming. And uh, especially when we have the opportunity to make something as uh, high quality and cool as this one turned out being. So for me, uh, Venom Pool will go down as my Build-A-Figure selection. All right. That, I love I'll be honest, I, I, I told Ryan, I don't think Venom Pool is going to be cool. But then when I saw it, I was like, oh, my God, you guys knocked it out of the park. So, Dwight, that's a great pick. I think for fourth round, that's great value. I thought I thought Ryan was going to pick him for sure. Um, all right. So my pick is going to be a movie pick. And I am actually going to go with Deadpool. I think Deadpool from that two pack that's still available in Hasbro Pulse, I believe with Negasonic Teenage 
or uh, pre-negasonic teenage warhead, whatever her name is. Um, I think this figure came out so well, Dwight. You guys made this feel like an import figure. Just all the accessories that he comes with, and I, I genuinely love this figure. I guess the only other movie character that I was really contemplating was that movie Venom that uh, came out in that Venom pool wave. That was a really good figure, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, this is my movie pick right here. I'm losing track of the picks right now, guys. So, do we have anyone? This left? is the what, your this is at? your last pick. Yeah, you're starting the fifth right. round, fifth and final so, round. The, my last pick was gonna be Cosmic Ghost Rider, but uh, obviously Ryan took him. So I'm gonna go with a different rider. I'm gonna go with that Punisher rider. I think that Punisher with the uh, pinless arms, that just nice looking black bike. Uh, I just love Frank, and I think his character is awesome. And Dwight, you and the team did an amazing job with that writer. That's my favorite five. Everybody in the live stream better support me. <laughs> I'm opening up your list because I didn't even see vehicle riders on that list. So I think you guys were hiding crap from me. <laughs> maybe it's my maybe my old man eyes didn't uh go down through all of the <laughs> columns so you know it might be on me maybe that happens but i'm still i'm throwing a i'm throwing a flag on this one because i think that's uh i think that's a little bit of bull going on and uh <sighs> so be it is it you or me ryan who's up next it's, this is your last pick dwight it all can right, be anything. You uh, you covered off one of everything, so this is your wild card. All right, I've got I've got I've got a I've got two. I've got uh, that I was going back and forth on, and I think they're both awesome. And uh, I'm going to go with uh, Hulk, uh, Jennifer Walters Hulk from the Fantastic Four. Uh, with the angry gray Hulk with all of the. Uh, 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 seams splitting in her skin with all the gamma glow stick, uh, coming through her it was uh, an all new sculpt it looked amazing uh the amount of deco on that figure was also very very high um the quality of the figure was really really solid um the gray hulk uh jennifer walters uh is going to take my wild card spot um, and I'm super stoked to see what uh, Disney Plus does with uh, her coming in uh, a year, something like that. I'm not sure. I, the timings get confusing in my head, but uh, very stoked to see the, the She-Hulk on Disney Plus. So I'm going to uh, throw She-Hulk down and my honorable mention is going to slip in there and Ryan can take it if he wants it would have been Kang because that was another cool, awesome figure uh, to wrap up the year. Yeah, so that that's, She that's Hulk figure is, is great. Let us know in the comments if you'd like to see maybe a green version at some point. But uh, yeah, it pains me that Kang is going to go undrafted here. Hopefully, he can f sign a uh, you know a G League deal or something to get on a team. But uh, I have to pick a retro carded figure because that was one of the categories, and I am going to go with the retro carded Kingpin on the Ooh. oversized card. So this was Dan's selection, right? The Spider-Man, which was clearly, you know, probably the, the number one on the board. But I love when we can do these oversized cards. We did it first with um, Hulk, the two Hulks uh, from a couple years ago. They're really fun to just keep on display. And that this was, you know, a, a, king, a kingpin version that I campaigned for for a while. Ever since we came out with the first version, I knew there were other versions to do. We still have, you know, the black suit and, and others. But, you know, the team sculpted a new... Uh, ascot piece there gave him some battle damaged uh deco from his fights with daredevil and spider-man so he is my pick for retro so dan summarize again what we're going to do on social and how fans can let us can help us choose the winner of this exercise yeah so on hasbro pulse we're going to put out our lovely faces and also our picks uh so you'll see all of our favorite five uh figures from 2020 Obviously, you guys should support Dwight because Brian and I kind of double teamed on him and didn't give him the list, right? So please support Dwight. <laughs> but uh, everybody secretly knows that, uh, you know, I won, but it, it's fine. It's cool. 
Um, but yeah, so just hop on to Hasbro Pulse later and uh, you could just leave comments and let us know. We always check comments too, so it helps us and gives us uh, some moral victories to see who won this draft out. And thanks again for letting us, uh, you know, just have this draft. You know, 2020 has been kind of hard on everybody. And so for this last live stream, we just wanted to have fun, kind of go over the, our favorite figures from this year. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it too. Um, but speaking of which season's greetings, this is why I had my ugly sweater X-Men uh, sweater right here. Thanks guys for leaving me hanging. Uh, I thought we were a team and doing this together, but uh, <laughs> obviously it was just me. Uh, but because it's the season, uh, we wanted to leave you guys with three gifts of our own, which are three teases for the future, for the new year. And so I'm gonna give the first gift to all of you guys right now. So the first tease for 2021, we can confirm that Cannonball will come with his legs, all right? We're not gonna show you, we're not gonna tell you now exactly how or where or when, but in 2021, we can guarantee you now, it's in the books, it's in the systems, that Cannonball will show up with legs. Will it be legs? Will it be legs alone, Dan, or just the figure? Or are just, we, are we letting, leaving that to? Uh... Just the legs. It's going to be just the legs. It's going to okay. be legs. Okay. Yeah. Box. That's it. We had the, we had the cost reduce out the head, but you get the legs. Exactly. Exactly. It's a business decision. All right. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the next the next tease is is mine. I'll take it. So I think we're all familiar with the uh, comic series Tales to Astonish from back in the day. This, uh, as I was researching it, it was actually the first appearance for quite a, a few number of characters such as Ant-Man, Wasp, Groot, um, Black Knight there. So no, we're not doing anything related to this web series or this uh, comic series, but I wanted it to play a pun on this. So. From Tales to Astonish to A Tale to Astonish, T-A-I-L, in 2021, there will be a new, completely new sculpt figure with a tail. So let the speculation run rampant. Dwight, you get the last gift for our fans. Okay, all right. Uh, throw some images up there for me, guys, because uh, Ryan uh, had this grand scheme, and I didn't read this, so I can't speak about it without a picture in front of me. So, Marvel Holiday Special. It was a book a while ago, and there was some weird zany stuff inside of it. That's as, that's as, literally as specific as I can get, because while Ryan told me all of the specifics prior to this call, I remember absolutely none of them. Accurate. Uh <laughs> You know, it's pretty much how they work with me every day of the week, right, guys? Um, okay, so we've got little, uh, we got uh, a Santa Claus in there, uh, evil Santa who ends up going uh, crazy, and it's Ultron in disguise, and he's battling Cap and She Hulk, and is that Luke Cage? And I don't know, I, 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 what's he holding us on the on the left? Is that like some sort of shock thing? It looks like a little spider robot thing. I don't know what's going on. You know, comic books, man. They're uh, amazing stories, but sometimes... Is that how you read comics? That's exactly how I read comics. Am I not reading this right? <laughs> am, I, am I not? I don't, I don't follow the panels. I just kind of look at my favorite things and I kind of pick them out. Is that wrong? <laughs> well, if that's wrong, I don't want to be right. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> um, I appreciate that. Let me take a breath, get a little glass of water. And uh, let's click over and show you guys what is going to be coming your way in the next year boom Bam. classic ultron you guys have been looking for this figure for 20 years and you're finally going to get it i finally broke down and said yeah let's make him so he is 100 from scratch all new he's got a cool kirby crackle power effect in his mouth and that's removable so you can uh you can have him kind of hold it in his hand like he's clenching, kind of like powering up a charge to blast out of his palms, or you can kind of have it as it's seen there, just kind of floating in his mouth, like his, you know, he's about to blast you with his mouth. But um, classic Ultron um, for the first time ever 
in Marvel Legends six inch line. What do you guys think? Happy? Is that a nice? Is that a nice Christmas, uh, Hanukkah, holiday gift for everybody? Enjoy. That's so generous of you, yeah, Dwight, sure. to share that with it's, the fans. It definitely won't. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. It definitely won't be under your tree or uh, this year, but you know, in time, in time, everything's in time. And it will uh, one hundred percent not come with a Santa suit. That was just trying to find fun comic shenanigans uh, on the internet. So yeah, that will that will wrap it up. Uh, thank you guys for joining us and sticking with us uh, for this uh, Fan First Friday. You know, as Dan mentioned, you know, this has been a crazy year, but we're so happy that we get to do these events and you guys get to watch it. Um, we will be back in touch with you in the new year, I am certain, uh, for that. And we also just wanted to close out with a thank you to, you know, the team we work with every day, the Legends team. We talked about them from, you know, engineering, packaging design, the whole crew. Um, and also especially thanks to the Pulse team. You know, a lot of production goes into these uh, events. So from Sarah, Evan, Liv, to the technical crew, Kevin, Greg, everyone on the Pulse side, thank you guys. And uh, fans, you know, thank them too for bringing to you these awesome Fan First Fridays uh, for all the brands that you love. Take care, and we will check you out next time. See you guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.